This is a video that I was planning to make anyway, but it's been further spurred on by a comment left on the recent MGTOW talk video between Stardust and Tildeer on the topic of, shall we say, genetically heritable problems. Quote, Glad to see you are still committed to truth, unlike your boys CS and Wombat. The latest CS video is the craziest piece of propaganda I have ever seen, and Wombat is wildly cheering it, unsubbed from both them instantly, very sad, end quote. Now, if you want to unsubscribe over something I've said, that's your prerogative. I really don't give a shit. My channel isn't even monetized, so it's not like I'm losing out on anything. You know, I, I don't do it for the subs and I don't do it for the AdSense, so <laughs> feel free to leave. Just make sure the door doesn't hit your ass on the way out. I do, however, take exception with the term propaganda being used here. When this guy says propaganda, what he actually means to say is that CS, and to a lesser extent myself, have been working towards an explanatory model that neatly fits the observable data, but unfortunately for him doesn't factor in his fucking bizarro alt-right white nationalist belief that this is all because big black cocks are stealing away the precious white women. No, I am not making that up. I wish I was. Now, the original purpose of this video was to look at CS's data more closely. Uh, his video was really focused on comparing a number of different factors to see what was and what wasn't relevant in terms of national success. And I think in that video, he did settle on the most significant dependent factor, the national average intelligence quotient. This video is going to be about improving the accuracy of his data analysis that IQ is the driving force behind national success. However, to start with, I think it's worth running a linear regression on the alt-right's central hypothesis, what I'll henceforth refer to in honour of the now unsubscribed SG137IU as the so-called big black cock phenomenon. Despite the fact that the alt-right can't even agree on what is racially constituted by the term white, their movement can largely be summed up by the phrase white nationalism. In other words, the most important thing, according to these people, is race. In technical terms, they believe that societal factors like crime and GDP are primarily driven by homogeneity. In his video, Clive quantified this using the Ethnic Fractionalization Index. As you can see, the scatter plot is a fucking mess. In fact, in line with the alt-right belief, there is actually an ever so slight inverse correlation between GDP per capita and ethnic diversity. As the scale approaches a fractional index of one, nations get poorer per person. But the statement is not entirely descriptive of the data set we're looking at here. You'll notice that there is a pretty good spread of economic success across the ethnic fractionalization index range. Also, the crime and murder rate, denoted by colour and size, is grouped along the bottom of the graph. Highly correlated, it seems, with a nation's wealth per capita, but not so much ethnic homogeneity. Despite claims from the alt-right that this is a race-mixing problem or explicitly a black problem, rather than a poor or poverty problem, crime and poverty do seem to be highly correlated on this graph of national data far more so than crime and the ethnic fractionalization index. The R squared value of crime as a factor of GDP per capita is 31.89%, meaning that statistically poverty accounts for more than 30% of national variance in crime rates, as opposed to ethnic fractionalization, which according to its R squared value statistically accounts for only 12.75% of national variance in crime rates. This is one of the things that I think people often miss, which formed a large part of my last video. It's not an either or scenario. There are different competing factors at play. I don't think anyone is arguing that racial in-group bias has zero effect on social cohesion. But as far as we are concerned with what the primary driving factors are, it seems to be something of a side issue. The alt-right's big black cock hypothesis has three times less explanatory power here than simple poverty rates. I think this also shows what Cheeky Bastard was talking about in his recent online hangout with CS, stating that you should probably reject anything that doesn't actually show a scatter plot. 
despite having a p-value of 0.014, making it quote-unquote statistically significant, the r-squared value for ethnic fractionalization 0.0585. This means that racial homogeneity accounts for only 5.9% of wealth variation between countries. An alt writer or anyone else with an agenda to push for that matter would happily flaunt a so-called statistically significant p-value like this, but knowing the r-squared value and seeing the scatter plot, we know it really doesn't account for jack shit in the grand scheme of understanding what makes human societies tick. Comparing GDP per capita to IQ on the other hand, you can already see a difference in the scatter plot with the naked eye. Running a simple linear regression on the same raw data as before, we see a positive correlation with an R-squared value of 0.3285 and a P-value of 3.772 times 10 to the minus 10. In other words, when we examine national wealth per capita, just based on its R-squared value, IQ has more than six times the explanatory power than ethnic homogeneity does in national economic success and the p-value is about a billion times smaller. Even without any cleanup of statistical outliers, 33% of national wealth variants can reasonably be accounted for just by IQ differences. Just look at how closely the countries are grouped around the line of regression for national average IQ compared to the ethnic fractionalization index. So now we're basically where CS left off in his last video, how can we improve on his analysis? The first thing which immediately stands out to me on this scatter plot is this little group of nations here. GDP per capita much higher than their national average IQs should account for. Hell, the status of Kuwait is damn near miraculous, second only to Singapore in terms of GDP per capita, but below the mean and median in terms of national average IQ, topping out at a meager 86 almost an entire standard deviation below the Western average of 100. If we isolate our data observations by an IQ of less than 90 and a GDP above 35,000 per capita, we end up with a list of only five countries, Iran, Kuwait, Oman, Saudi Arabia, and the UAE. As I mentioned in my last video, this can quite easily be explained away by the fact that the Arabian Peninsula contains massive crude oil reserves. Despite a relatively low national average IQ, their financial success is very simply explained by the fact that the higher IQ industrialized world requires this natural resource that the Arabs geographically lucked into. The reason for these statistical outliers is rather easily explained by oil. So we're going to remove these countries from the data set uh, in terms of exploring GDP per capita as being a possible function of national average IQ, they are clearly outliers. The second group of outliers which immediately stands out starts with China, a nation with a staggeringly high national average IQ, but well below the international mean in terms of wealth, only just pushing above the first quartile in terms of GDP per capita. Like the countries of the Arabian Peninsula, if we isolate our data observations by an IQ above 90 and a GDP per capita below 15,000, we see another very clear pattern emerge. Armenia, Cambodia, China, Georgia, Moldova, Ukraine and Vietnam. All either communist or recently ex-communist countries. A repressive system of totalitarian government that would economically cripple any country regardless of their IQ. We'll remove this group as well. Just by removing these 12 obvious outliers, we're now left with a surprisingly narrow band of countries. Running a linear regression again on this new clean data set, the R-squared value literally doubles from 32.9% to 62.3%, and the P-value drops several orders of magnitude further to 2.2 times 10 to the power of minus 16. But we can improve on this predictive model even further. Looking at the way these nations appear to fall around the line of regression, there appears to be something of an arc. Using a low S or locally weighted scatterplot smoothing function, we can perform a simple best fit analysis for a non-linear regression. 
This works by locally analyzing the data and applying a polynomial line. It's kind of like a quick, dirty method of figuring out what your model should probably look like. As you can see, there is a very clear arc to this data set. GDP clearly increases as a factor of IQ, but it's not a simple linear increase, it's quadratic. Performing a regression using a simple two-factor polynomial model, our R-squared value improves to 69.89%. There are obviously other factors at play, but as of right now, based on this data, we can safely say that more than two-thirds of the variation between nations can reasonably be explained simply by IQ differences. I think it's fair to say that the alt-right mantra is misguided. In other words, you don't need a nation of white people, you need a nation of smart people. Means testing would be a lot more useful in building a strong society than DNA testing. That's not to say that homogeneity isn't a factor at all, but it certainly isn't a big factor when compared to other variables. But, you know, if you don't like hearing these facts because they don't fit your ideology, that's perfectly fine too. Leave, unsubscribe. For anyone else still watching who hasn't already rage quit, uh, the data analysis for this was all performed using the R statistical suite, which is open source. Um, I've provided a link in the low bar as well as a link to download Clive's national data set and my own R script. Uh, thanks for watching.